World Cup finals and those sorts of things. So uh, no, it's really important that t today that the bats batsmen especially put their hand up and get the job done. Any changes to the team? No, we've got the same side coming into today's game, yeah. Play well, good luck. Thanks, man. Cheers. Graham, probably would have batted first if you'd won the toss. No, actually, we, we probably would have gone a different way. Again, uh, I think it probably started a bit slow this morning and hopefully get better as the day goes on. It's a difficult ground to defend on. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can bowl well up front and, and really restrict them. It was, a, it was a cracker of a game on Friday. Pity you there to be a loser. But um, your team showed a lot of fight. You fought back about three times to get back in the game. Yeah, I think we played some really terrific cricket. I think emotionally the boys have taken a bit of, uh, bit of time to get over. Friday night it was a real emotional roller coaster. So we're looking forward to today. It's an awesome place to come play, especially when it's a full house. And, uh, you know, we've really played some fantastic cricket throughout this series. And I don't think we've really allowed them to play well. And we've concentrated on our own game, which has been great. So, yeah, we're looking forward to a big one. And any changes to the team? Yeah, unfortunately, Polly's not fit. He's got a, a strain in his back um, from the other night, and uh, Johan van der Vat comes in for him. Then also, it's a team game, but you know, individual brilliance can, can win this. Uh, 119 you got in the first game, Mackay got 6 or 22. So it'll be hoping one of your players can, can uh, individual brilliance to win the game and the series. Yeah, obviously. I mean, it's uh, one day cricket can be decided on one man. So you know, but uh, you know, the fortunate thing is we've got a squad of guys that can perform on a day and can win you games. So you're not relying on just one individual. So we're looking forward to today. As I say, hopefully we can bowl well up front and then chase well in the afternoon. And hopefully there's a few more hundreds around for, for a few more of our guys. Very well, good luck, thanks, Jim. Well, that's it. Should be another thriller here at the Wanderers. That's the toast news from the toss. Australian captain Ricky Ponting has won the toss, and Australia will bat first. Well, the players are on their way out to the middle. 270, 280 was spoken about, Barry, as a total. What do you reckon? I think it should be more. I think 300 is, a, is, is what somebody would feel very comfortable with. There's the Australian side. Unchanged. And uh, it's an unchanged side, and I think they'll be looking for a, a good start here. And I think, you know, obviously Gilchrist in the first 15 and Hussey in the last 15 is going to be two key areas that South Africa have got to target. Who is your money on, Barry? My money is securely in my back pocket. <laughs> Come I, on, make I, a call. I, I reckon what's going to happen here, it's going to be a top. I mean, it's going to be two and a half each. <laughs> that, would, that would certainly be an interesting finale to everything. That's for sure. So to all it is, we're at the Liberty Life Wanderers. There's a look at the South African team. And the man you need to look at there is Johan van der Vaart. He comes in because Sean Pollock is injured. They have to get up with Pollock not being there. We're ready for the action. The commentators are ready in their seats. They're chomping at the bit too. Let's go down to them. Two orders at the moment in the Standard Bank Series. Of course, this is the final at the Wanderers, and we are all very pumped up for this game. The South Africans are. They've been out there for a long time today. They're out there for some time before the Australians did, by the way. And, uh, of course, the Australians are very excited about the fact that they've come back from 2-0 down in the series. And now it is 2-all. Graham Smith, lots of pressure on him as the skipper in front of the home crowd. Capacity crowd expected at Liberty Life Wanderers. Some 32,000 people are going to be crammed in here today. Conditions are absolutely ideal for cricket. No rain expected. The ground staff have assured us of that. And the pitch is an absolute beauty. McCain Teddy, first ball. And it's a good one first up. There'll be some good carry here at the Wanderers. He's away. And he's timed that superbly. Well, he just said value for shot. You get it here at the Wanderers. It fairly flies off. Gilchrist will feel much more settled. Mackay and Tini had to pitch one up a little bit more. Just to see if there was any swing. And if there was any movement off the track further up. That's first prize, of course. Get the man forward. And as it, Gilchrist didn't really push forward a long way, just a little prod. Made sure he middled the ball. That's away. That's his zone. Loves it on the offside. And he drives well through extra cover. That's over the top. Couple of bounces for. It's a big over for Australia. Just a bit short for McCain Tini. Rounds off to 10 from the over. 23 for none. Straight drive for four. Beautifully played. Right along the dirt track. They don't come better than that. He's in the drive zone and he, he jumped all over it. But look at that. No running. Once he did it, just stood dead still. Straight again. Four again. Well, you can clearly see it's a good batting track. Ball comes on nicely. 
Good for driving. That is through, and that is four. It is the shorter boundary by, I reckon, around about 25 yards. Well, something's bothering him. I think it's the bat. He's not happy with it, but <laughs> my goodness. Why would you change it? Strain leg side and another boundary. McCain Tenney is a little bit all over the show right now. And you can't do that to a player of uh, the calibre of Adam Gilchrist. Well, I want to take McCain Tenney's side here. Yeah. I think this field placing is putting him in enormous pressure. He cannot bowl too straight. And therefore he errs wide outside off. That's away on the leg side. Shorter boundary again, and that's another boundary. So three boundaries in the last four balls between Andrew Hall and also McCain TD. And uh, Kadic has now moved to 18. Gilchrist on 28. And they're not going to miss out on anything. It's a little bit leg side. In fact, it's not. It's more like middle stump. It's still worked away. It's one of the strengths of these uh, two left-handed opening batsmen. Oh, that's a good shot. He's hit that uh, very hard indeed. I don't think it was through the hands of the short extra cover. It went all the way along the ground, I reckon. That's the uh, 50 partnership. Short delivery again and uh, pulled away. This is a fast outfield. It's four more. Well, the Australians couldn't have dreamed about a better start. They've managed to get a few boundaries away, despite the fact that early on they got uh, they were nailed to the crease a bit. This wasn't a flyer like first or second over flyer. This has been building. Yeah, another good uh, shot from Gilchrist again, straying a little bit in in uh, length. The Macaiantini just giving him enough opportunity to to play that favourite pull shot of his. Well, straight down the ground, and uh, that one will go for four as well. Uh, sixth boundary off from Tinney. It's 65 for none. Oh, he's hit that in the air through the offside field. Bounces away down towards the boundary. If he's going to bowl those cutters to Gilchrist, I would suggest he needs a sweeper back. He may just get him caught out there somewhere. And there we go again. The sweeper would have cut that one off, and uh, that also is going for four. So he's got to come up with a plan now, Andrew Hall. This is what it's all about. Can't just keep bowling there to Gilchrist without protection. I reckon they should try around the wicket. I know it's a shorter boundary on the leg side, but if those cutters work, then you're hitting against that little bit of a cut that goes away to the offside. This way you're just sliding across the, uh, the off stump, giving Gilchrist plenty of room to swing the arms. And he's going to make you pay, and he is big time. 49 for Gilchrist, just 34 deliveries. Yes, he's, um, he's being damaging. And that's his single. Oh, there's a, a misfield there, but it won't cost South Africa anything. A half century to Gilchrist. That's his 44th half century. He's sixth against South Africa. And he's first of the series. And that's the wrong one. Outside uh, that off stunt. That's not the place to bowl. Slightly over pitched. And uh, hasn't Gilchrist got stuck into it? Recently. That's gone way up into the crowd. Well, Katic has been bogged down just a little bit. Gilchrist has been doing the attacking, but uh, he doesn't often settle for that. And this is an example, a superb cricket shot. In the commentary box now, Mike Hazeman, and uh, alongside him, Daryl Cullen. Outstanding shot, just outside the line of stump. The bigger boundary there. And obviously looking at uh, the bowling of Johan van der Butt so far, the first couple of overs. Good. That is absolutely remarkable. Andrew Hall has taken a blinder. He looked in no position whatsoever, stuck the hand down. The ball went straight in, and that is a huge wicket. Wow, what a catch. Great catch by Andrew Hall. He almost stuck it out as if to say, well, I've got to get something down on it. And it's stuck, and it's a crucial period of play here for South Africa. Just when Gilchrist was looking to launch, Andrew Hall pulls out this bit of brilliance. Well, we've said all along, a couple of us have said that fielding may just be the deciding factor between these two sides. And you need work like that if you're going to stay in this match. 
97 now. The end of Gilchrist for 55. Australia have lost their first wicket, which brings Ricky Ponting, the captain of the crease, playing in his 250th game in one international cricket for Australia. Slightly leg side, and there's no protection down there. So they finished that over in style. Ricky Ponting, I think, had another word or two as well in the middle off camera. Just to put his point across. 114 for one. 19 overs gone. 114 for one. That run right back to six per over. He's one of those quiet achievers, Simon Kadic. He's gone to 50 now. 51 of just 60 balls. So that strike rate is very good for him of 85. Six fours and a magnificent shot for six. You haven't spoken since the first game. Now there's uh, certainly plenty going on in the middle. Off camera, it's Smith and Ponting. Having plenty to say. That's away. That's where Ponting wants them. And that's gone for four. He will not miss out in that region. Bit of turn. As beaten him. Nicely played by uh, Ricky Ponting. Using the pace, just going with the turn. Edged wide. Unlucky. Got out like that in Durban. This time he's had a bit of luck. Well, could that be a defining moment in the day? You're just bleeding for a wicket. Outside edge, genuinely. And he's put that one away too. Just straying down the leg side. He plays the pull shot so well, Ricky Ponting. Just rides with it. Anything on the leg side, he's dynamite. Well, Mark Boucher came up to the stumps. And immediately, Roger Telemachus had to come straighter. Outside off stump. He'd have a thrash at it. If he got an edge, it wouldn't matter. So, Telemachus comes straight. And Ponting puts it away. There's a man on the extra cover fence. And he's flipped that one over the top to again a leg side boundary. One short, one up. Doesn't matter to Ricky Ponting. More runs. Four. Short boundary. He hasn't had much of a strike since Ponting came in. Uh, Simon Kadic. But he's got that on the way for four. 150 up. Just one wicket down. Oh, and that was premeditated. Smashed away. Simon Kadic has decided that uh, blocking's not the order of the day. They want to get as many as they can. Down the wicket. You don't often see that to uh, Jacques Collis. Well, that shows what a good deck it is. And he's got confidence to go down. Maybe you're being a little bit harsh. Oh, he's gambled. I think he's picked that slower ball from Jacques Callas and he's gone after the short boundary and that's 20 rows back. Was it the slower delivery? I'm not sure it was. Did he roll the fingers? What do you think? Yeah, I think he picked it. I think there's something, you know, they, there's so much video analysis these days that there's some change in the action for Jacques Callas before he arrives at the crease and, and Ponting and the rest of the Australians have picked that up. Gone again. And another one. Just drifting into the pads. This is going to cost them big time. Ricky Ponting, 100 in the uh, World Cup final a few years ago, and now he's gone to 50. That's where you can't bowl. That's three of them. All in the same area, all to the same type of delivery. So easy, with so much time. Off the front foot, the pickup. Got to have such quick, quick hands. Pick the ball early. You just can't afford to bowl at the stumps. It's got to be a foot wide. That's much better. This is a bit more luck involved in this one. He's spliced it over, but it's still gone for four. It's such a short boundary. That's unlucky for the bowler. 
he's decided he's going to go after them punting there's no holding back here yeah he sliced it there was enough on the ball and bounced away on the hard ground but again you see he just drops his head away on the drive through the offside and fortune favors the brave well just to give you an indication uh, patrick 40 runs of the 50 came on the uh, onside just 10 on the offside just shows you the sort of line that you've got to bowl to ponting and that one he's hit in the air and again picked out the gap he's on a mission ricky ponting on a big mission and that's to beat graham smith into submission Oh, he's got hold of that one, and one bounce into the crowd. This is uh, not a great time to be brought into the attack, because absolutely anything could happen. There's no way they're going to be playing themselves in. Have a look at that, from outside off stump. Oh, that's down the ground. It's going to go all the way. Don't worry about trying to catch that one. It just kept going. Three or four rows back, but enough. This is a great shot from Ricky Ponting. He had a very quiet start and then all of a sudden he broke loose. Kai and Tini straight back into things. It's right up there. He's just showing us and uh, he can take on the straight boundary as well. And Ponting's on 76 or 52 deliveries. Incredible. Katic is in the air. This is good. This is out. Yes, caught a third man. Actually, pretty well played by Katic. He obviously intended to get it down to third man. He hit it right off the middle of the bat, and it's gone straight to Telemachus. You might have thought for a moment that he was looking to get it a bit finer. Played it too well in the end. The extra pace and bounce from Makai and Tini. Can this give South Africa a chance to somehow subdue these Australian batsmen? A well played innings from Kadic. Australia now 2.16 for two. Well, there's been a bit of a change. Uh, Martin was down to come in after Ponting, but uh, the decision's been made by the Australian cap, the captain, I assume, to uh, to send in Hussey. This is the dismissal again. Straight to Telemachus. Oh, Ponting is having a go, and that's gone through the field as well. Boy, this is lightning. This outfield is unbelievable. Another one. Well, Ponting definitely has decided that almost everything's got to go. He looks to me as if he's after the world record here. Yeah, 400. Yes. Nice four. And Scott through the field. And there's another very good time of the ball down the other end. In uh, Hussey, he's only just arrived at the crease. And uh, he really only lent on that one. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Well, he has a batsman who's only just arrived at the crease and you, you just wonder where he's been. Why hasn't he been playing one day internationals and test cricket? What makes it so much better, this shot, is that that is not a big gap. He's threaded it to perfection. Bang! Goodness me, that is huge. That has gone out of the ground. Maybe on the lunch table in that block of flats. Well, I said he was searching for the boundary. What he's searching for is the block of flats beyond it. That's a monster. Just misses that. And probably hit it over that. Yeah, Callis, you see there, strays onto the stumps. And that's where you cannot bowl with a short boundary to Ricky Ponting. Another six. Round the wicket, Jock. Round the wicket. Advancing, Callis saw him coming, and that is a great shot. That is a very good shot indeed. Saw him coming, dropped it short, he backed away, gave himself width, and slapped it for four. That's a sign of a really good player in touch with his game. Down the wicket, Callis saw him coming, and he's still able to get it away square of the wicket to the short boundary. They've managed to get a boundary every over. It's putting so much pressure on the bowlers. time and into the crowd that is a great shot from Mike Hussey 
How do you stop this freight train? 34s, seven sixes. Amazing. Short this time, and again it's been dispatched easily for four. Lovely control from Hussey. I'm just wondering, just projecting the game ahead. Beautiful batting. 4-6-4. Four, four. No answer. What's South Africa going to have to do when they come out? I mean, they're going to have to review their batting order. They cannot afford to have a dip in our top innings. I mean, it'll only get them at best to 270, and it's going to be much uh, more than that. So they're going to have to revise their batting order, South Africa. They have to think about it right now. Full toss. Just the one this time. And Callis will be happy that over's finished. 16 from it, 274 for two. Well, the clapping's because uh, Ricky Ponting is on 99 with just 70 deliveries. Magnificent. Yeah, he likes this ground. Once one. Shot from Mark Boucher. Ricky Ponting has got three figures. It has not been referred. Magnificent stuff from Ricky Ponting. Absolutely outstanding. What a remarkable player. That's his 20th 100. His teammates love that. Adam Gilchrist on his feet and applauding. Everyone else there as well. It's been a treat. It certainly has. And out the blocks was Mike Hussey because he realised how important it was for the skipper. This in the uh, deciding game. Skipper leading from the front. Short and wide and gets the treatment. Advancing. And four more. Goodness me, that's a boundary off the first for the over. Johan van der Vaart is uh, starting to get some serious treatment here. Those figures are not looking very respectful these days. And uh, I guess he's got a few mates with him. Loves driving through that region. Three extra cover and he's got himself four. He rarely misses out. And that sort of opportunity, Mike Hussey. Just eases it through, doesn't he? I think the beauty about Mike Hussey is the, is the ability to get his weight to go into the shot. Watch how he leans right forward into the shot. Head right over the ball. And that's why he hits it through the offside so well. Look at that leaning right through. Make sure the weight goes into the shot. Now that's uh, gone away for four. It's been given run, so there must have been uh, a bit of willow there, top edge, which is a little bit dangerous for Mark Boucher. You're not kidding, that's a wicket keeper killer. 50 for Hussey. In no time at all, 33 deliveries. Seven fours, one six. Cries of catch out. But no one there. A boundary to finish the over. Turns that into a big one. 11 runs on that as well. 41 overs gone. 312 for two it is now. Remarkable stuff. Six. Callis thought he was in the game at one stage. Not to be. He would have been if he'd been 20 rows back. No catch by the spectators. And just another six. The eighth in this innings. 63 now for Mike Hussey off just 38 balls, eight fours and two sixes. And the full toss was just dispatched. There'll be a few that reckon, uh, oh, there we go again. I mean, they really are picking the gaps beautifully. What a position to be in though. Oh, he's hit that one and that's gonna, it's gone as flat as attack for six. Well, Ricky Ponting is uh, certainly enjoying himself out there. I mean, two down they were in this series. Uh, this is a different looking side totally. Lots of intensity from Ricky Ponting, even though he's in a wonderful position. Just since he's, he's looking at bigger things here. Oh, that's six. That's straight. That's going straight over the top of the side screen. Oh! 
That's a great box down there, but they were, they were scattering all over the place. The best box in the house, straight down over the top of the Standard Bank sign at the far end, and Ricky Ponting has hit the ball straight into it. Well, he's heaved that one down the ground. Now, let's just see if we can pick this ball coming down over the top of the screen. Here it comes. And uh, there they go. Oh, that's six as well. He's worked that away on the onside. It's a question of getting underneath the ball. Anything you can get underneath, the way these guys are playing, is going to disappear into the crowd. Oh, not like that. That's six as well. That's gone way over the top of mid-on. Now, that's an example of exactly what you don't want to do. I mean, that's the length that says, take it. So much power. It's the length you spoke about. It's happy hour. It's been happy hour for a little while now. Here's a full toss, and uh, it's in the air. This will be out court. Yes, at last. Hussey trying to hit a full toss down the ground. You heard Pat Simcock saying, you're better off over pitching than under pitching. Hussey didn't quite get that one in the middle of the bat. Uh, it's gone down the ground, and Mackay and Tini's taken the catch. Nice and easy from Mackay. Fifty-one balls. Just have a look at that. Eighty-one runs and a strike rate of 158. Well, you got to go a long way to beat that. Three seventy-four for three now. And uh, the man striding out of the centre now is uh, probably the hardest striker of a cricket ball in world cricket. Well, it's a full toss. It's going over the top. Will it go the other way? Yes, it is. All the way. That's the direction he loves. Uh, he really does heave them in that, uh, in that, into that corner, does Ponting. Well, he's now reached his 150, 154 to Ponting of 99 deliveries. Flays that one through the offside again. No ball called as well. Uh, there you go, another no ball. Well, Simons is not going to waste any time, so a no ball four. In fact, this over so far, two no ball fours. Oh, that's it. Take that. Another no ball. And it's gone all the way as well. Well, this is turning out to be, this over is turning out to be a nightmare for him. Not only is it a no ball, he's in it for six as well. And uh, the highest team total in one day international cricket. It's the first time any side has got to 400. This is the sort of thing this Australian team will enjoy. Oh, and that one's disappeared as well. Another four. That's 22. 22 of this over and only three balls, three legitimate balls have been bowled. Well, how many in this over already? Too many. Oh, he's hit that way over the top as well. And he's got him. No, he's got him. That's a great catch. That's a wonderful catch by Dipinar. Well, this is as good a catch as you see in circumstances like this. He had the rope right at his heels. It was as flat as a tack. The ball would have gone at least five meters over the boundary. And uh, it has been brilliantly caught and brings to the end what is one of the most brilliant knocks ever seen here, I feel certain. But Dipinar had to judge it well. His state just inside the rope but Ricky Ponting leaves the stadium the Wanderers bullring have played an in innings that will be remembered by everyone here for many a year a standing ovation well played Ricky Ponting 407 for four yeah. so Brett Lee uh, coming out see if he can uh, brute force a few 
Oh, that's an inside edge along the ground for four. Well, when it goes wrong, it really goes wrong. One-handed is another no ball. This is getting out of hand. It's gone for four as well. Well, I don't know what uh, Telemarcus is doing. Having done so well in Durban and having been so uh, disciplined, I just don't understand this. Another fumble down there and another run. And uh, I think he's home. He's taken the bales off, but uh, he's going he's gonna to refer it. But I've got to say, I thought he was home. Yeah, I think Mark, Mark Boucher thought so as well. Just a little delay here. And, uh, took the bales off, but uh, when he took the bales off and he had a little an appeal, then he walked around. I think he, he, he could see he was right there. Yeah, Boucher asking the question uh, very positively because he actually was facing the other direction. Uh, it was a reluctant referral by the umpire. I think he, he knew it was not out. Last ball of the innings. Brett Lee has smashed it away down towards square leg. Kemp uh, hovers down there but then pauses. In comes his throw. And that is the end of the innings. A wonderful batting performance by the Australians. Of that there is no doubt a world record batting performance. And uh, from a South African bowling point of view, they'll be very, very pleased it's over. That's uh, almost a taken or a given as they say. There is the uh, performance of Australia, a wonderful performance. Ponting, the top scorer, won 164 of 105 balls. And um, well, who would have thought that we would have had a world record score made at the Wanderers here today? So uh, there it is, 434 for four off the 50 overs bowled. Right, and that's uh, the bad news, I'm afraid, <laughs> for all the bowlers. Well, uh, we'll be back to watch the South African run chase in uh, a little while from now.